I can't stop. I'm hysterical. I'm a dog. I'm a dog. I'm a dog. I'm a dog. I'm wet. I'm wet. I'm hysterical and I'm wet. I'm in pain. And I'm wet. And I'm still hysterical. No, no, don't hit it. Don't hit it. It doesn't help. It only increases my sense of danger. Gene Wilder was definitely a genius comedian who captured the hearts of many people with some of his early works such as The Producers, Blazing Saddles, and Young Frankenstein. He was the son of Gene and William J. Silberman who were from Russian Jewish descent. Wilder first became interested in acting at age 8 when his mother was diagnosed with rheumatic fever and the doctor told him to try and make her laugh. Throughout his many years in the theater, he met Mel Brooks with whom he developed a friendship and was eventually cast in the movie The Producers, which told the story of a corrupt producer and his accountant who wanted to create a production of the worst Broadway show ever so that they can embezzle the money given by investors. Even though many of Gene Wilder's early movies weren't instant Hollywood box office hits, with time they gained enormous fame and cult followings that pretty much have lasted up to this day. And even if you're not too familiar with Gene Wilder movies, I'm pretty sure that many people have seen the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and they can recognize Wilder for playing the eccentric Willy Wonka character in this family-oriented yet dark-toned movie. With that being said, this is the second video of my retrospective on Gene Wilder. The first video focused on his early life till the mid-70s ending with Young Frankenstein, whereas this video will focus on his movies from the mid-70s throughout the 80s. So be sure to check out the first video if you are interested in his early life and career. With that being said, let's dive into the golden age of Gene Wilder movies. In 1975, Wilder started working on a movie called Super Chief, which eventually got renamed Silver Streak. At the time, Wilder felt that the film was pretty offensive, but that by including Richard Pryor, it would be okay. The acting duo met on the eve of shooting this movie in Canada. It was a modest encounter and the two exchanged friendly greetings and expressions of admiration for the other person's work and then they went their own way. The next day they got to work together on camera for the first time and boy was this a great pairing. Gene and Richard became a comedy duo working on many movies together over the years. This movie was based on a screenplay by Colin Higgins and was sold for a record $400,000. Silver Streak was like the old Laurel and Hardy comedies. The hero is Laurel, he falls off the train, stumbles about, makes a fool of himself, but still gets the pretty girl. Audiences have been able to identify themselves to this type of character since as early as Buster Keaton. This movie tells the story of an overworked book editor, George Caldwell, played by Gene Wilder, who is on a cross-country train ride and starts an unexpected romance with an enigmatic woman named Haley Burns. His vacation is interrupted when he witnesses a murder for which he is then accused of. The true villain kidnaps Haley and ejects Caldwell from the moving train. Then he meets a car thief, Grover Mulden, played by Richard Pryor, and together they go on a mission to attempt to save Hill while also being pursued by the police. The movie was an immediate success. On a note about Pryor and Wilder, they were actually supposed to have been paired already in Blazing Saddles. However, because Pryor showed up multiple times to script sessions high, the role that he was supposed to play was offered to Cleveland Little. Even though the filming of Silver Streak went smoothly, this was already an ominous foreshadowing of trouble to come. Either way, they became the first interracial comedy duo in the history of cinema. After this initial success, the duo were tapped for a follow-up feature directed by Sidney Poitier called Stir Crazy, which we'll talk about later. Wilder's following project was The World's Greatest Lovers, which was inspired by Fellini's The White Shark. This movie was written, directed, and starring Gene Wilder. It premiered in 1977, but was a critical failure. This movie is a tribute spoof of classic silent comedies and old Hollywood of the 1920s, specifically the popularity of romantic icon Rudolph Valentio. When a film studio decides to find a movie star to rival celebrity Rudolph Valentino, the company's executives sponsor a contest to audition aspiring actors. 
high-strung baker Rudy Hickman, played by Gene Wilder, enters the competition and seems to hold some promise. His obsession to becoming a leading man eventually gets Rudy into serious trouble with his wife. As mentioned, this movie was criticized heavily and felt unbalanced and excessive in the comedy. His next project was called The Frisco Kid, which is a western comedy. Actually, the movie was supposed to star John Wayne, but he dropped out and was replaced by Harrison Ford. This movie was in development for seven years and Wilder had actually already been offered the film a few years prior, but he had turned it down. After multiple rewrites, Wilder reread it and agreed to do it on the condition that he could help write further drafts of it. The Frisco Kid follows the story of Rabbi Avram Belinsky, played by Gene Wilder, who arrives in Philadelphia intending to travel to San Francisco, where he plans on starting a synagogue. Once on US territory, he gets his luggage stolen by a group of con artists. Even though he got robbed, Avram remains in high spirits and sets out alone on foot towards the Wild West. On his journey, he gets into multiple altercations until he is rescued by a compassionate horseman named Tommy Lillard, played by Harrison Ford. Together, they continue their journey towards California, even though Tommy seems not to be as heroic as he makes himself out to be. In 1980, Wilder reteamed with Richard Pryor in Stir Crazy. You see, I promised I'd get back to that movie, and I did. This movie was actually somewhat difficult to film because Richard Pryor was struggling with a severe cocaine addiction at the time, even though once the movie was released, it actually did good at the box office. This film tells the story of two unemployed friends who are given 125 years of prison after being framed for a bank robbery. While in prison, they befriend inmates in order to plan the jailbreak and create a bulletproof plan to do so. While in prison, one of them discovers an unexpected talent as a rodeo rider, and their escape plan begins to take shape thanks to the annual prisoner's rodeo. Thanks to this movie, Wilder and Poitier, the director of Stir Crazy, became friends, which resulted in them working on a new script called Traces, which was eventually renamed Hanky Panky, and was released in 1982. This is actually an important movie, as this is where he met Gilda Radner, with whom he had a relationship and soon married. They worked on several films throughout the decade and were true partners in crime, both on screen and off screen. Sadly, Gilda Radner died in 1989. As for this movie, Hanky Panky, it tells the story of a New York City architect, Michael, who takes a cab with a stranger, Sarah, and is talked into mailing a package for her. Unknown to him, the package contains military documents, and when Sarah is murdered, he becomes a suspect pursued by cops and a government man named Ransom. On the run, he meets Kate, whose brother's death was somehow connected to the package. She helps him evade the cops, but many misadventures follow as Ransom tenaciously follows them. After this movie, Wilder directed his third film, 1984's The Woman in Red, which starred Wilder, Radner, and Kelly LeBrock. This was an adaptation of a French film entitled An Elephant, Ça Trompe Enormément. This movie tells the story of a happily married family man who would never have considered an affair, but falls completely head over heels with a woman dressed in red after seeing her walking by in a parking lot. After that moment, he tries various schemes to sneak out to meet her, but soon finds that adultery is not quite as easy or even pleasant as he had imagined. This movie wasn't well received at the box office. In 1986, Wilder attempted to make a third successful movie with Gilda Radner entitled Haunted Honeymoon. This was a horror comedy for which Wilder served as a writer and director. This film also marked Radner's final appearance in a movie prior to her death of ovarian cancer in 1989. In the film, Gene Wilder and Radner play Larry Abbott and Vicky Pearl, two radio murder mystery actors who decide to get married. Larry, plagued with on-air panic attacks, is treated with a form of shock therapy and subsequently chooses to marry Vicky in a castle-like mansion which had been his childhood home. Once there, they meet the eccentric members of Larry's family, including his great-aunt Kate and his cousin Charles. Unfortunately, this movie once again bombed at the box office. In 1989, TriStar Pictures wanted to produce another movie featuring Pryor and Wilder entitled See No Evil, Hear No Evil. Gene Wilder accepted on the condition that he'd be allowed to rewrite the script. 
This was the third movie in a series of four films featuring the comedy duo, and tells the story of a blind man named Wally, played by Pryor, who is looking for a job, and a deaf man named Dave, played by Wilder, who is running a newsstand. Dave hires Wally, but things turn sour pretty fast when a murder occurs at their newsstand. Throughout the story, they help each other out in solving the murder mystery by combining their collective senses, even though a detective investigating the murder pegs them as the main suspects. This was the last film that Gene Wilder did in the 80s and also concludes my second video in my three-part retrospective on Gene Wilder. In the third video, I will focus on his career throughout the 90s until his final project. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this retrospective. Please be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Leave me a comment too and let me know what your favorite movie, fun fact or moment is from any of his projects. I'd love to hear them. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.